Legend of War here, and today we've got a rating your one-man doom stack covering Gorok within the Cult of Sotek. And I think that if you're going to do a one-man doom stack as the Lizard Men, the uh, the Cult of Sotek is definitely the right one to do it because you get 10% uh, extra physical resistance just by completing all of your campaign objectives, and that's for all characters and all units. You've also got the extra 25% ward save with a unique uh, follower, uh, no, no, not follower, banner that you can get uh, from the sacrifice tree. So this is, these are both unique things to um, the Cult of Sotek. Essentially giving you 35% uh, physical resistance, sort of for free. Alright, we've also got 30% uh, ward save, which this is taken into consideration for it. And uh, we've got 58% physical resistance and 85% magic resistance. So in terms of him being a tank, he definitely gets a tick of approval there. Well, we'll have to see how he goes as well, but he's a small guy, a small lizard, so it would be difficult for them to dish out loads of damage. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Uh, my only concern with this being a one-man doomstack is uh, his ability to dish out damage. He doesn't have the Sword of Cain, and I have said that I don't want any more um, melee one-man doomstack lords that have the Sword of Cain. We kind of got the point with that. Um, but I'm just concerned that without some ability to wipe out massive amounts of infantry, um, well, we've got these as well. Those could help. Um, I guess we should use them, but that's not really Gorok's ability. That's a Cult of Sotek ability. Um, so I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, his ability to actually actually dish out damage, that that is definitely up for a question here. We are up against two really strong armies here, including Ungram Iron Fist. I'd like to really see if Gorok, how he, how he does against a duel against Ungram, because that'll uh, factor into you know how I'm going to rate him. Now, as an added... Thing to this battle we're also going to set the time limit to 20 minutes uh it doesn't matter if we if the timer runs out but i'm just going to set 20 minutes that's it no more than that because uh we've, we've had these battles go on for a very long time before and people said they get boring and i understand that now another thing as well is that because they've got a lot of artillery and a lot of iron drakes i could probably and should probably get them to try to shoot their own troops because they'll just shoot at me indiscriminately because they don't have any other targets. And all AI in this game functions the same. It's not like Dwarf AI behaves differently from Skaven AI. They don't. They all, they'll all they all happily do friendly fire. So uh, let's see how it goes. Also got a ton of abilities, most of which I don't think have a huge impact. Really. It's just like, just extra numbers on stuff. Which, um... Like, his base numbers are already pretty good. What he really needed was, like, a bound, like, banishment spell or something like that. Rather than these abilities here. Because, uh, getting his weapon strength up any higher, it's not going to matter if he can't hit, like, more than a couple of entities at a time. Alright. I'm going to steer clear from the flame cannon. Because what we want to do is get into their infantry over here. Not so much the Iron Drakes. We've also got Regen and Unbreakable. Wonder if he actually defeated Gotrick for that. Because I know that he gets it in his skill tree if his uh, hit points drop below 50%. Okay, just try to take that. Let's get into those hammerers and just let their own artillery hit us. So you want to be at long range so that they're inaccurate, so that they have a much higher chance of hitting their own troops. That's it. We don't even really want to be attacking, just like, get in there. See, look, I'm not doing the damage. I haven't landed a single hit yet. So this would be very good against armies that do dish out sink, uh, friendly fire. So Empire, Skaven, Dwarfs, yeah, as long as they've got these kind of units. That's it. That's it, they're just, they're just killing their own units. I have a feeling after this battle, uh, Gorok is not really going to be cold-blooded anymore. He's going to be toasty-blooded. Gorok has yet to land a kill. <laughs> it's just, it's all friendly fire. 
There's not really a testament to Gorok's ability here, apart from just being so hard to kill. But if I was in the dwarf's position here, um, I just wouldn't shoot. Not with, not with this. I just keep him busy, wait the 20 minutes out. I mean, normally I don't have the timer on at all. Because we're the attacker here, we lose if the timer runs out. Of course, you're never going to really get the AI go through and get this much resistances on their uh, lords. It's most of the time. Like, sometimes Malice will do it. But the way to handle him is just don't attack him. Kill his army. Which I've shown that loads of times. That's it. Like I said, he got six kills. He's yet to dish out a thousand damage. Probably getting disrupted a lot. But... Just let their, let their own units kill, kill their troops. When, if and when they run out of ammo, then we can see how he does. But I imagine that he's, he's spending a lot of time probably on his back, if I can see him. <laughs> oh, that is a... That is... That's a roasted lizard right there. All of these abilities here, they don't help against missile fire. got to use their infantry as meat shields. They're far less likely to do a lot of friendly fire damage, so let's get him. But yeah, that ability, if you can actually land that hit, does a lot of damage. Kind of reminds me like a really fast, overpowered, uh, fiery convocation. Easy spell to dodge, but if it does actually hit, goddamn does it do damage. Okay. Well, their lord's going down, but I don't think Gorok's been the one to dish out the damage. He's only inflicted 3,800 so far. Alright, so he's down. Where's Ungrim? I haven't seen Ungrim. There he is. So let's have a look at how much damage the Iron Drakes have done here. 7,400, that one's not, not done too much. 7,000, might have stuck to the same one. 18,000 on this one. This one here has killed more than, uh, than, than Gorok by like a pretty large margin. By a very large margin. Alright, so yeah, I do want to see how well Gorok does at chunking Ungram Iron Fist down. It looks like about 400 damage in that hit. That's pretty good. I didn't have any of his abilities active. Oh, no, I did. Absolutely. Yeah, about 400 damage a hit. And he's seemingly able to get through Ungram's defenses quite easily. But Ungram is definitely taking some friendly fire damage, there's no doubt about that. But, he's going down really quickly, despite all that. Like, two more hits, he's down.
Yeah, it's definitely um, Gorok that's doing the damage, but it doesn't look like... No, Gorok didn't get the final blow, because it got him down to one hit point there. Okay, well, Ungram's down. Um, cool. Kind of want you guys to stop. Uh, I'd rather do damage over here. At the end of the day, they are probably what's going to give us the victory. If As long as we leave them alone. They're, they're doing too much damage to their own troops. And they're speeding up the battle. Like, we might actually get through it in time if we keep this up. If they keep this up. So I think killing them might actually be counterproductive. Roasted their own iron breaker unit there. This is this is all them, all friendly fire. So yeah, like I said, the uh, the different races do not have different AI. The, they're in full Skaven mode right now. Whereas, if it was a law friendly uh, dwarf AI, they'd never do this shit. You know, every single one of these guys would be going in the book. And be have to become slayers. It. Just keep killing your own units. It's fine by me. So most of their bounce of power will probably still be tied down over here. Uh, I'm just thinking about if I should go after them. I, I think we're fine for the time being. Just keep killing these guys here. They just keep using them as a sh meat shield and stuff. We could be getting close to their army losses now. They've lost like 80% of their forces. It's just that they've also dished out a lot of damage to me. We got seven minutes left, and yeah, are we gonna still get them to kill a lot of their own units over here? Gorak's actually starting to get more kills now because he's not getting disrupted as much because the artillery stopped firing at him, knocking him on the ground. But yeah, it's not like he inflicts a hundred kills a second sort of thing. He's, he's no Marathi. Right, I'm gonna put that down there just to try to cause the army losses, because I don't think it'll actually kill any of them. 
Oh, they're just gonna move out of the way. Yeah, I don't, no, they're not. I don't think they'll kill any of them. It'll just. Let's have a look. No, they they completely moved out of the way. It's not doing any damage. Yeah, they completely dodged it. Oh well. Doesn't matter. We're not really here to test that anyway. So Gorok's definitely much better at fighting out single entities than he is at uh, dealing with infantry. If his job is really just to hold infantry back while other units do all the damage. Which, of course, if you don't have those other units, um, that's a bit of a problem. But yeah, he takes out single entities really quickly. Another way we could cause the army losses is by running away, sort of, and just healing. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter, we just caused it then. Because we'd regain our balance of power. Because your uh, remaining regeneration is taken very little into account in these sort of situations. And there we go. We did it with, you know, five minutes left to spare. Uh, we got a good one of those great invocation of Sotex off, but I don't think this one here really did very much. Which is probably for the best. So, Gorok managed to do 151 kills, 22,000 damage worth. And everybody else that died is just entirely because of friendly fire. But he was very tanky, because there was a lot of firepower being shot at him. And he, he managed to hold on with... Uh, let's see, how much health did we have in total? We had about 16... It was about 14,500 health. And... Yeah, he lost like 60% of his health. Like, including the regen. But yeah, if we had a full army of Stegodons, for example, like a proper doom stack, that would have actually been very difficult to deal with, with that kind of army. So, Gorok defeated something that I don't even think like, the, my go-to Doomstack would have handled. Of course, my go-to Doomstack would have had Lightning Strike, so it would have been only one army, and it could have definitely handled one of these armies at a time. Without needing to use the friendly fire of them. So, I'm just thinking about how to rate it. That's the problem. Like, he was very tanky, but you can't just... You're not going to ever get a 10 out of 10 if you're only good at one thing. You have to take everything into consideration. And he's... Like, would get a 10 out of 10 for tankiness, but he doesn't get a 10 out of 10 for, um, like, dishing out damage. And I think that's important if you're going to use a one-man doom stack, because, as I've said before, you don't want the battles to take forever. We were l lucky in this sort of situation that we could have used their own army against them, but there's many armies in the game that don't have the ability to do that. Like, for example, if you go up against uh, vampire accounts, for example, they're very rarely going to cast Wind of Death on their own units. They very rarely even have Wind of Death, so you, I guess an old melee armor, you just have to chunk them down. If it was going to fight a bunch of vampires just on their own, that's fine, but grinding down on zombies and skeleton warriors, that'd be an absolute chore. So, I'm leaning towards giving him a 7 out of 10. It's a good one-man doomstack if you have patience, um, but if you don't have patience, I would highly advise against this. I'm glad that he managed to do it without the Sword of Cain. That's definitely more impressive. Sort of, <laughs> dare I say it, any idiot can get the Sword of Cain and use it. And it certainly does make them a lot more viable to, like, burn through them. Thing is, as well, lizard men, um, they're fine to pick up the Sword of Cain because they have no problems with public order. Um, only, only downside for the lizard men would, of course, be the increased upkeep cost because their economy is not amazing. But for the cults also, take us fine. And uh, the reduced relationship with all factions, that would be a little bit of a problem. But as the cult of Sotek, there are things you can do to mitigate it with the High Elves, uh, Bretonia, and uh, the Empire forces. Not with the dwarfs, though, because there's a follower that you can get uh, here that will give extra relations at the cost of Skaven relations, which doesn't matter, you have to fight them permanently anyway. 
So that would be you're fine to pick up the sword of Cain. Um, his uh, mace of Ulamak there with the 15, uh, sorry, 18 percent extra physical resistance. That's pretty good, but it's really more about the actual sword of Cain ability to be able to just massively just wipe out a whole bunch of units straight away. Uh, that's what really makes these these uh, melee lord one main doom stacks able to actually get to a thousand kills. Otherwise, it just takes too long. So yeah, I'm leaving it with about a seven out of ten, maybe seven point five out of ten. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Very, very tanky. Um, probably good to have him supported by another army. Just have everybody, like, tr get, have Gorok hold them back as much as possible because they don't send everyone at him. And then just have the Stegodons shoot. Or even, um, but it's still the uh, uh, engines of the gods get them to use their solar beam thing to, to wipe them out. But anyway, that's the end of this one. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time, fuckers. Appreciate you. Bye. Oh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> I forgot about this. We should probably go look through... Look... He's, he's got all the traits. We know what the traits are. He's got he's got them all. He, he, he even got Nakai. Um, you know, he, I'm sure he's got the... Um, where is it? Yeah, he's, he's got all the traits. All the good ones are here. So we've seen... We know which ones they are by now. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.